What is up guys? Welcome to Faith Family Church Online. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jocelyn. And my name is Casey. If you're joining us right now, welcome to our online family. Tag a friend in the comment section to invite them to watch with you or share this video to your feed. You never know who you may need to hear today's message. We will be your online host for today and you belong here at Faith Family Church. So we are so glad that you chose to be with us today. If you're watching right now, here's what we need you to do. Send someone the link to this live stream, text someone to get online right now and watch with you, share this to your page, do whatever you gotta do to share this message with someone new. If you're watching from home on Sundays, you can watch with a watch party. And here's what that means. You can get a group of people together, either in person or online and watch the service together from wherever you are. This is a great way to stay connected and hold one another accountable from wherever you are. Check this out. We have an online team watching with you right now and they're available to you if you need anything while you're watching with us. You can ask a question, say hi, request prayer through the comments, through private message, whatever you need. This team is so excited to chat with you and it's part of their God-given purpose to connect with you, our online family. A great way to discover what your God-given purpose is, is through a process we have here at FFC called Next Steps. Yeah, and this is how you can discover not only who we are, but also who you are and who God created you to be. From there, you can use your calling right here at FFC. There are four steps total, so each step will help you learn more about us, more about yourself, and more about God's plan for your life. You can complete Next Steps online right now. Just go to myfaithfamily.org slash next steps to begin that journey. There are some awesome things happening around Faith Family Church that we feel like you'll want to be part of. We are officially only one week away from our fall semester of small groups kicking off. So exciting. Yes, this is going to be an amazing semester. And if you've been looking for a sign to get in a group, this, this is, is it. it. You can browse our list of groups right now at myfaithfamily.org slash groups. And if you don't see a group that fits your interest, you are free to lead your own. You'll find everything that you need to have an awesome small group right there on our groups page. Now to all of our ladies out there, our sisterhood event is coming up and tickets are on sale right now. This year we're doing things big with our first ever two day conference. Our theme for sisterhood this year is uncommon and you're not gonna wanna miss it. We're going to have an awesome guest speaker. There's gonna be food, fun giveaways, brand new merch that you've never seen before. Trust us when we say you do not want to miss this. Make sure you get your tickets for conference right now over at myfaithfamily.org slash sisterhood. To all of our parents with little ones, we have an online service ready for them to watch now at myfaithfamily.org slash FFCKids. Yeah, each week we have an awesome experience planned just for them both in person and online where they can learn more about Jesus and the Bible while they have so much fun. So much fun. If you're a parent with a student in 6th through 12th grade, make sure to check out our youth group at myfaithfamily.org slash youth. We have awesome monthly services on the third Wednesday of each month planned just for them, as well as small groups happening each and every week. Our next youth night will be on September the 15th. We are so excited for today's message. Remember, if you ever miss a Sunday at FFC, want to rewatch one of your favorite sermons or series, you can always go back and watch anytime. To do this, you can download our app on your smartphone, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or visit our website at myfaithfamily.org slash sermons. To follow along with today's message and access all the notes, download our Faith Family Church Baytown app from the App Store. This is the best way to stay connected and stay in the know on all the things that are happening around here. You can rewatch those past sermons, access any sermon notes, you can give, join a small group, and so much more. You want to download the app. 
Make sure you stay engaged with us throughout the message today. Let us know what you're watching, what you're feeling. Let us know where you're watching from in the chat section. And remember, there is an amazing online team who yes. will be there chatting in the comments with you, and they would love to help you if you need anything at all while you're joining us online. You can reach out through the comment section or private message if you have prayer requests. If you have a question about how to get connected or anything else that you need, we're here for you. We love you guys and we are here. If you need us, let's get ready to worship.
Well, good morning, church. Whether you're joining us online or here in person, let's continue singing like the king is in the room today. Let's continue believing for it today.
working in this place. I worship you. I worship. Come on, sing it out this morning. You are here and you're moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here and you're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. unconditional today. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker today. So as we worship, I just want to encourage you to cast your cares on him. For his yoke is easy and his burden is light today. So if you need rest today, if you need joy today, it's found in his presence. Jesus, we love you. We sing. stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you never stop.
hearts today, God. We say, your way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Give me a shout of praise today. We believe in Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us online today. However you may have come across this live stream, whether it just came up on your feed or if you attend with us regularly, we are so glad that you joined us online. If this is your very first time joining us here at Faith Family Church, welcome. We would love to get connected with you. Just visit myfaithfamily.org slash connect and there you can fill out a digital connection card anytime throughout the week. You can also comment below and say, I wanna connect and a member of our team will send you the link to do that. Once you do that, we'll send you a small gift to thank you for joining us for the very first time, as well as give you some information about who we are and how you can get plugged in if you'd like. A member of our team is online with you right now and can help you with anything that you may need while you're with us. Just comment below or send us a message and we'll get back with you right away. We wanna continue our worship today through our giving. Your generosity is making a difference in our city and in the lives of so many each and every day. And because of you, we are able to bring the good news of Jesus, not only to this city, but to our online family around the world. You can give right now by texting the word FFC give to the number 77977, or you can go to myfaithfamily.org slash give. Today is going to be so awesome. Here's a look at everything we have coming up. What's up guys? Welcome to Faith Family Church Online. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Isaac. And my name is Abby. We're so glad that you're here today. Here's a look at everything coming up at FFC. If you're joining us today with your kids, we have an awesome experience planned just for them in FFC Kids where they'll be having fun, learning about Jesus while enjoying service. You can access their service now at myfaithfamily.org slash ffckids. If you're interested in who we are as a church and how you can get connected, Next Steps is for you. This is a four-step process where you'll learn more about who we are, what we believe, and what your God-given purpose is. Today is Next Steps 1.0, and it's a great place to start. You can begin your Next Steps journey now at myfaithfamily.org slash next steps. Our fall semester of small groups will be kicking off next Sunday, September 12th. Small groups are one of the life-changing parts of Faith Family Church. This is where breakthroughs happen and long-life Christ-centered relationships are made. You can check out our small groups directory now at myfaithfamily.org slash groups to find a group that's right for you. And if you don't see one that interests you, you're free to lead your own. It's going to be a great semester. To all our ladies out there, our Sisterhood Conference tickets are officially on sale now. This year, we're having a two-day conference on October 1st and 2nd, and it is going to be unlike anything we've ever done for Sisterhood. This year's Sisterhood theme is uncommon, and we're going to have an amazing guest speaker, some powerful services, giveaways, and a whole lot of fun. Make sure to head over to myfaithfamily.org slash sisterhood and get your tickets before they're all sold out. To all of our Dream Team out there, our big annual Dream Team party is coming up this Friday, September 10th at 7 p.m. So make plans to be there. This is a night that is completely dedicated to celebrating you, the Dream Team. There will be special giveaways and a service we have planned just for you. We'll see you there. If you haven't joined our Dream Team and would like to, it is not too late. You can begin your journey now at myfaithfamily.org slash next steps. Lastly, Surf Saturday is coming up next weekend on September 11th. This is a time once a month where we go out into our community and show the love of Jesus through acts of service. To find a project or submit a project and get registered to serve, visit myfaithfamily.org slash serve. Remember, if you ever need anything at all while you're here with us, we would love to help. You can reach out to us here in the comment section or via private message at any time and a member of our team will gladly assist you. We're so glad that you're here. Welcome home.
church. Anybody glad Amen. to be in the house this morning? Woo. Come on, let me hear you out there. Are you awake? And you guys, yes. you guys are on fire today. They got some coffee. They're good. Got I some love that. Coffee. coffee. Welcome. Jesus. Welcome, everybody. I want to welcome our online family as well. Those of you that are worshiping from home today, so glad that you are with us. Today is a special Woo. day. Yes. We are celebrating our seven-year anniversary, if you could not tell yet. And we are seven, so seven, pumped. Seven, 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 Seriously, we could not be more thankful. Seven is the prophetic number of <laughs> completion. Oh, watch out. But really, we are so thankful for our church family. You guys are the best in all the world, and we brag about you all the time, uh, any anytime we can. And we're just thankful for all that God's done. And how many of you know he is just getting started? And the best is yet to come. So we love you guys. Amen. Thankful to be your pastors. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Seven years, seven years ago. I remember that first Sunday well. I was... Uh, helping set up a little bit myself that morning and making the rounds, making sure everything was in its proper place or so we thought proper place. Do you remember the first Sunday at the school that we walk in? We had already had this big setup before and we had practice and the cheerleaders at the high school took up half of our lobby space with a giant pirate ship. It was homecoming. Do you remember this? They were ready for homecoming and they decorated. Does anybody remember that day? I don't know if you were there that day. But, you know, of course, you know, it just took the anxiety and stress to a whole nother level because, you know, it wasn't exactly the way we thought it would be. I was already afraid and uh, thinking yes, that we had made a mistake. The night before, he actually told me, babe... I cannot believe we've done this. Like, is anybody going to show up the next We day? knew we'd have at least 30 or so because that's that were family members that <laughs> we were 30. We were come. threatening you, them. Family. Like, if you want to see the grandkids, <laughs> you better show up and come ready to work. And God just exceeded yeah. our expectations from the start, from the jump. 603 people came that first Sunday. Yeah. Who would have ever thought it? But from, from day one... We've, we've always believed this, that God is a Ephesians 3.20 kind of God. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think according to his power yeah. that's at work on the inside of yeah. us. How many of you know we serve a no limits kind of God, huh? Yeah. Just no limits. So, God, we're not going to put any limits on you. Do whatever you want to do in our lives, in our church family. So happy anniversary, happy birthday. I, which one is it, birthday or anniversary? I don't know. It could be both. I and I want to say, you look better now, babe, than you did seven <laughs> years ago. I've got a few more gray hairs. I was going to say, he, he got gray over yeah, seven years. Yeah, well, you know, that's what church people <laughs> will do to you right there. Give you some gray hairs. Hey, enough of that. Today, we are uh, we're glad and really honored to have our guest speaker today, Sean Nepstead and his wife, Diana. They, they pastor an amazing church in the Bay Area in California, making a big difference. How many of you know we need good, faith-filled people in the great state of California? Yes. So he and his, his church are making a huge impact, and uh, he's got a beautiful family. He'll talk about his daughters more in a moment. But I want you to know uh, he's actually authored a brand-new book that is impacting the lives of so many. It's called Don't Quit in the Dip. These are available in the lobby. He'll be talking about it more. But not only is it an encouraging people of every background, pastors are being encouraged by this all over the nation. He is, uh, he is speaking everywhere. Uh, really, we're glad to have him. Glad he could squeeze us in on this Labor Day weekend. So church family, why don't we put our hands together, give Sean Nepset a big Southeast Texas welcome. Can we do it? Well, can we clap our hands if you're in love with Jesus today? Come on. Would you do me a favor and just stand to your feet all over this place and welcome everybody watching online. And um, it's a very significant day. I don't take this lightly that I'm here on this day for your anniversary. And I feel like it's very important that you recognize the season that you're in. Because otherwise you will come dressed for the wrong season. I don't want to come to humid Florida in a Parker jacket. And you need to know that this season that you're in is a season to rebuild, 
It's a season of grace. We give all glory to God. How I many know we don't have any problem, though, honoring a man and a woman who seven years ago, because of a dream that God sparked in their heart, planted this church. I want to, by a show of hands, how many of you have started coming since the building? Since the building. Can you raise your hand? Just raise your hand. Yep, look at this. All over. Fantastic. Um, I want to let you know this is not normal. And I, I honor the both of you. Nobody will ever know the sacrifice that you have paid because they won't say it. Nobody will ever know the price that you two paid. And I thank God for you because this church, huh, can I tell you, um, I've been around quite a bit. I speak quite a bit and I don't see this everywhere. You ought to be very, very grateful, very, very thankful to the Lord. And I think this is a season where you ought to pray like you've never prayed before. You ought to give like you've never given before. You ought to get on the dream team, go through next steps, and serve like you've never served before. Because what is in front of you is even greater than what is behind you. Come on, if you love your pastors, clap your hands and show your love. Gosh. I would encourage you to just send a little email to the church. You don't have to send it to them, but just send a little email of what this church means to you and where you'd be without the church just so that they can get that and begin to hear because they'll never even understand the, 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 the weight and the influence that they've had in everybody's life, but I'm so grateful today. We have a lot of fun. Uh, before you're sit seated, why don't you turn and tell somebody this. Turn and tell them this, tell them this. I'd be the best looking person in the room if it wasn't for you. <laughs> Grab your seats. Thank you so much. Let me introduce to you my family. This is my tribe on the screen. I have my wife, Diane, of 23 years, and my four beautiful daughters. I actually need an updated picture because the one, the brunette daughter, she just got married 10 days ago. Yeah. So I am now a father because of the law. And uh, Hadassah is her name, Mariah, Alexandra, Victoria. We have twins. We had four girls under the age of two. Two, one, and twins were zero. It's because we're really good planners. <laughs> no, we had, you've seen a double stroller. We had a triple stroller and one on a leash. Don't judge me. I see you judging me. I'd have put her on a shot collar, uh, collar if California would allow it, but you do what you got to do. Four girls in diapers. Sometimes just so much estrogen in the room. So I'd walk in sometimes and start crying for no reason at all. <laughs> Why are you crying, Dad? I don't know. Don't try to fix me, you know. <laughs> So we got a male dog. His name's Buddy. And uh, I don't even know if you can call him a dog. Like, if he can fit in a purse, come on, that's a cat, you know. But anyway, I'm grateful to be here. I love Texas, love everything about Texas. Uh, everything in Texas has an accent, and I love it. Cats are like, me, yeah, yo. <laughs> Dogs are like, rough. You know, I just love Texas. Matter of fact, my daughter, Mariah, was born in Dallas, and so Texas is very dear to our hearts. But uh, I bring greetings to you from San Francisco, California. Uh, we call that the Bible Belt. <laughs> Come on, guys, you're going to have to be quicker than this today. But I did write a book called Don't Quit in the Dip. And I told our publisher, I was like, I don't want to release a book in COVID. They said, Sean, it has to come out now. We're in a worldwide dip. Come on, some of y'all feel like you're in a seven-layer dip. <laughs> Just dip after dip, one trauma after another issue. And, and really the idea of the book is everybody who feels stuck needs to get this. If you know somebody who feels stuck, you need to get it for them. You can get it anywhere books are sold. But the idea is that God has a version of success, a dream. And there's usually a dip before you get there, and most people quit there. And i got to clarify in Texas, it's not like don't quit in the dip. You know, it's, it's, the, like, it's like a dip dip. Are y'all with me? Come on, it's Texas. Are we going to have some fun today? So I'll be signing books in the lobby, and you can pick one up for you or a loved one. Uh, I would love to meet you. Uh, otherwise, you can get it online. But uh, my prayer is that today, not only would we have some fun, but we would grow. And it's very significant to be seven years in this thing and to have what God has blessed you with. you got to be a good steward of that. And today, if you're taking notes... I would like to dedicate this message to everybody who feels like God is taking too long. Today, our sermon is entitled, Don't Settle. Would you repeat that after me? Don't settle. Turn and tell somebody, don't 
settle. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 is our theme verse, and then we'll go to Numbers chapter 32. Galatians 6, 9, and Numbers 32. Paul is writing to the people of Galatians. He says, let us not become weary. In other words, you can grow in weariness. And he says, don't let us become weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest. And read this out loud with me, everybody. If we do not give up. One more time, say, don't settle. I was on a laser-focused mission one day with my taste buds as my compass. My wife and I had been in a conference in Los Angeles for all day, and we came out, and we were hungry. How many know there's a difference between being hungry and being hungry? We were hungry, and I had a very specific culinary experience in mind, and I was not willing to settle for anything less than the perfect will of God. My wife, not so much. After about an hour driving through the maze that is Los Angeles, she had gotten so tired, she screamed out finally in frustration, enough, Sean, enough, just pick anything I don't even care where we eat. And she turns around and points to a fast food restaurant to which I gasp, because oh. I'm not trying to get fast food at this particular juncture in my life. I'm trying to find that one restaurant I was told about where the ribs are falling off of the bone garlic mashed potatoes and a chocolate molten lava cake that when you cut into it, it oozes chocolate with vanilla bean ice cream and fresh strawberries on the side. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I'm trying to do. But I realized something in that moment, a life lesson, and that is this, that when you're tired, your judgment's thrown off. Talk back to me, church. Like, don't ever make a decision when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. That'll probably be the wrong decision. Just halt, H-A-L-T, and just think about it for a second. Because many times, like you would agree with this, that, that uh, occasional fast food meal is not going to harm you, but a consistent diet of that will put you in the hospital. Okay, listen, everybody. We have to be careful that in this season we're not making fast food decisions. When the delicacies of God's word and will are right in front of us. Can I hear a good amen, everybody? But oftentimes when you doubt that God has something better for you, or more for you, or purpose for you, you will settle. Like mediocrity always seems reasonable when you doubt God's best. Somebody say more. <clears throat> Pastor Josh, there's a place I gotta take you in San Francisco. It's called the House of Prime Rib. Since we're talking about food this early in the morning, it is the best prime rib you've ever had in your life. 1906, it was built. You walk into this dimly lit restaurant, and they, they only serve one thing, prime rib. You're not getting tacos or taquitos or, or burgers or pizza. You get one thing, prime rib. And they don't even give it to you, like, like bring it from the kitchen. They wheel out this Airstream-looking RV kind of warmer to your table, and they open it up, and they slice it off. When they slice it off, it just falls on the plate. Oh, and they come up, the waiter comes up and says, would you like the king's cut? I said, I serve the king. Yes, I will take the king's cut. They, when I bit into this prime rib for the first time, I didn't know how they made it, but it was heaven. All right, now, about the fourth time I went there, the waiter comes up to me and has the audacity to ask me, I see you liked your meal. Would you like your second slice for free? I said, excuse me? Don't play with my emotions like that. What are you talking about? He said, no, if you finish the first slice, you get the second slice for free. I said, how come nobody told me that the last four times I've been here? And you know me, I was like, can we make that retroactive? And I leave with four slices and a to-go bag today. He said, no. I was so angry that there was more available, and I didn't even know it. Okay, listen, I know some of you might be feeling empty in life, thinking there's nothing else in store. Can I be the skinny little waiter that comes to the table of your life and let you know God still has more available, like more than you've ever seen? The first seven years have been amazing, but God still has more. I want to help us today because even though God has more, there's always a temptation to settle. And oftentimes when churches get into a building, it's like the big push for the building, and then they settle. Don't settle. God still has more available. And I want to talk about a group in the Bible who settled. The history on this group of people, the people of God, they were the Israelites, and they were in slavery for 400 years to a man named Pharaoh. They cried out to God for a deliverer. God sent a deliverer named Moses and set God's people free. If you've seen the Prince of Egypt cartoon, you're basically caught up to speed. Here was God's plan. He was, his plan was to take them out of Egypt and into Canaan, the promised land. Let's review. 
He wanted to take them out of Egypt and into Canaan, the promised land. One more time. His plan was to take them out of Egypt and into Canaan, in the promised land. Say out of. Say into. Say out of. Say into. Listen to me. God's plan is always that he takes you out of something and then takes you into something else. If you only come out of, you'll never be satisfied or fulfilled until you go into the plan and the destiny that God has for you. That's why he takes us out of darkness and into his marvelous light of his dear son. Can you imagine, though? And by the way, if I was showing you my hand, if we're playing cards, let me just show you my hand. My plan and goal today is that you would all, all, all of you who have not yet been through the Next Steps course here at the church would take that next step. It's actually today. Like, there's no reason you shouldn't do it uh, today. After service, go across into the lobby. There's a room that says Next Steps. This is how you join the church, become a member, discover your gifts, so you can actually get on the team. I'm here, I'm here to tell you, you will never be satisfied and fulfilled until you are actually walking in the next step that God has for you. Okay, with that being said, I'll come back to that. Can you imagine with me how excited they would have been the first day they left slavery? Like, can you imagine the emotion? They would have been so excited. They'd have been singing songs. They'd have been high-fiving each other. They'd be making up new TikTok dance videos. Like, just so excited. And they, all 12 tribes come to the east side of the Jordan River, and 12 spies go in. How many spies? 12 spies go in. 12 spies come out. Two spies say, God's with us. We can go and do this right now. The other 10 spies say, there's no way. Mm -mm. I don't know what they're feeding those corn-fed Canaanites, but they are massive and were grasshoppers in their sight. Okay, pause. The enemy didn't call them grasshoppers. They called them self-grasshoppers. See, when you have a wrong view of God, you also have a wrong view of you. And, and out of the 12 spies, you can only name two. What are the names? Joshua, Caleb. You can't name the other 10. Why? Because nobody builds a monument to critics. These other 10 had powerful names, and yet we don't even know them. In the Bible, we looked them up. You know what some of their names were? Strong names. One guy's name was Judge. Another was, was, um, was Fortunate. And one name of the guy who went in, his name, his literal name was Attack of the Almighty. I started thinking, man, that must have been some labor. <laughs> You'll get that on the way home. All right, strong names, but we don't even know who they are. Now, in Numbers chapter 13... They literally spent 120 words talking about how negative Cain in the promised land was and only 11 words saying how good it was. Okay, listen, church. If 90% of your words coming out of your mouth are negative, complaining, unbelief, doubt, you'll punk out too. Because what you dwell on, what you dwell in is what you dwell on. Like, don't, don't, don't dwell on the negative. Don't dwell on what God can't do. He can do anything. Anything is possible with him. And so today, as we look at this group, they literally said, we're going to settle. And I want to unpack this a little bit, because as we unpack this, I want you to take some notes. They come to the east side of the Jordan River. Twelve spies go in, twelve spies come back. Only two say we can do this. Ten say there's no way. And it's crazy to me, because the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land was about twelve days. Okay, stay with me. Twelve days earlier... They had seen God do the miraculous, like 10 plagues to change Pharaoh's mind. They come to the Red Sea, and God opens up the Red Sea. They walk across on dry ground and see the first aquarium in history. <laughs> Twelve days later, they're like, I don't even know if God knows where we are. What? You just saw the impossible, and now you're doubting God? This, these, these 10 leaders were so negative, they saw God do the miraculous. Isn't it crazy how willing we are to settle when you doubt that God has more for, for available for you? And by the way, doubt began to spread through the entire congregation. Everybody started to accept the negativity and the doubt because of these 10 leaders. Here's why. Because leaders can't lead people beyond where they are spiritually. These were leaders quitting. These were leaders Bailing on the mission, leaders throwing in the towel. And I started looking at this and I started thinking to myself, huh, sounds familiar. Because in 2020, a lot of churches 
saw a lot of leaders bail on the mission. A lot of small group leaders bail on the mission. A lot of dream teamers bail on the mission. It's interesting to me because these leaders were bailing on the mission of what God had for them. And I started thinking, huh, the American church is very similar. And all it took is 12 months, 12 months for leaders to bail. Now, your pastors haven't said anything to me about this church, but I'm just going based on what everything I've learned about the other church in all the churches in America. But 12 months, that's all it took. You're telling me people who were like, man, I'm ride or die. This church has saved my life. God saved my marriage here. We're never good. Man, God is so good. And then you turn around, where'd they go? If I'm the devil, I'm probably thinking to myself, gosh, I didn't know it was going to be this easy. All it was going to take was a crazy election, some racial hostility, and a, and a pandemic to get the church of Jesus Christ a third to walk away? Are y'all here this morning? Okay, listen to me. The, these 10 guys, 10 guys, they, they did not believe. And it, by the way, it's a sad day when you don't believe God is bigger than the problem in front of you. In the book, I talk about this that our lives are affected and directed by the way we think. Would you agree with that? And the way we think determines the way we live. Okay, these 10 guys, 10 guys spread neg negativity to the entire congregation with no Instagram, <laughs> with no Netflix special, w with, with none of them had any type of email blast. 10 guys spread negativity to a million and a half people. How? I'll tell you how, because negativity is more contagious than COVID. Woo! Some people have it. You just, like, the, it seems like everything they do is just like, ha, 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 negative, ha, ha, negative. I'm like, ooh, I need a mask for my soul. This is bad. You know, people like this, like, it always seems reasonable to settle when you're going through a difficult time, when you're going through a dip. But can I tell you, this was their plan. Their plan was, hey, guys, let's have a meeting. Let's kill Joshua and Caleb, okay, the faith guys. Let's kill them. I got an idea. Let's go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back to normal even though normal was toxic. And by the way, um, can I just encourage somebody, don't romanticize your past either. Because the devil would love to come and remind you of a couple of laughs you had with some friends, but he will never remind you of the endless tears of desperation. You cried on your bed or drove in traffic saying, God, if you're real, show me a sign. And he did show you a sign. He came into your life, gave you a fresh start, gave you hope and healing, a great church family. Come on. You want to go back to what? There's nothing back there for you. God has so much more in store for you as a follower of God. And I'm just telling you, God, he looked at this group of people. He said, fine, because of your murmuring, complaining, and unbelief, you can have a 40-year dip. And their corpses would litter the wilderness for the next 40 years until God would raise up a new generation that would believe him. Yeah. See, with God, there's a dip. With us, there's a dip. But with God, there's a way out. And I know some of you are there spiritually. You feel like, man, spiritually, I feel like I'm in a wilderness. Well, that's why this church is here. That's why you go through the next steps. That's why you get in a small group. That's why you get on the dream team. So you don't feel that because you're not doing life alone. And you think if we fast forward the tape now to Numbers chapter 32, this is the second time that they have come to the promised land, all right? When they were here the first time, there were kids and their parents punked out. They have heard songs about this. They've dreamt about this moment. All they have to do is cross the Jordan River, 12 tribes, they just cross the Jordan River, and the land is theirs. This is where we pick up our text in Numbers 32. Take a look on the screen. The tribe of Reuben and Gad. Everybody say Gad. Gad. Say, oh, my Gad. <laughs> they had very large herds. Say, large herds. <clears throat> and flocks, and saw that the lands of Jazer and Gilead were suitable for livestock. So they came to Moses and Eleazar, the priests, and the leaders of the community, and said, The land the Lord subdued before the people of Israel are suitable for livestock. And guess what? Your servants have livestock. If we found favor in your eyes, they said, Let this land be given to us as our possession. Do not make us cross the Jordan. To which Moses says, Oh, heck no. This is what your parents did and cost us 40 years in the wilderness. We're not doing that again. And they said in verse 19, Oh, we will not receive any inheritance with them on the other side of the Jordan because our inheritance has come to us on the east side. 
of the Jordan. Okay, quick quiz. Um, how often do we try to convince God where our inheritance ought to be instead of where he told us it will be? All right, class. Uh, where did God tell them to go, say, Cain in the promised land? Where did he say the promise was located, say, Cain in the promised land? The tribe of Gad says, hey, we know that. We see that. We heard the same sermon as you. But if it's all the same to you, we're going to stay on the east side of the Jordan in a city called Gilead instead of going into Cain in the promised land. Like, like they literally said, we're going to stay here. And Numbers chapter 32, verse 40 scares me. Because I don't know if you know this or not, you need to be careful about what prayers you pray because sometimes God will give you your prayer even though it's not his preferred plan. Numbers 32, 40. And Moses gave Gilead to them. And could you read the next four words, if we have that on the screen? And they... Those four words haunt me to my core. Because all of us know what it's like to push, to push, to push, and then we settle. You push for seven years, and if you're not careful, you settle. You got into a building, and if you're not careful, you settle. God still has more available. We have to ask ourselves a few questions about our text. Number one, why did they settle? If you're a note taker, write this down. If you're not a note taker, write this down. Number one, they were tired. They were tired. Now, in their defense, can we just agree, traveling through the wilderness would have been so difficult, especially back then. I mean, there's no Uber, there's no Axe body spray, it would have been funky, it would have been, you know, it's just, and plus they had kids. You know what it's like to travel anywhere with kids? It's just, they're just all, I have four daughters. Here's how I left the house before kids. You ready for this? This is how I left the house. I want to leave the house now. (laughs) Then I had kids. Here's how I leave the house when I had kids. Come on, come on, come downstairs. Every, are you, you didn't even brush your hair. Did you brush your teeth even? Listen, your jacket's buttoned all into the wrong butt. You have your shoes on the wrong feet. Come on. Now it's just my wife. <laughs> like, you know what kids are like. They're like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom. And the dad's like, you should have gone to the last cactus. I'm not stopping again. But in their defense, come on, let's be honest. They knew that to continue meant to extend more time, more energy, more resource. And to them, they looked around, and in verse 1, our text tells us, they said, this land is suitable. Translation, it'll do. It'll do? Listen, my wife in the opening story, I told you that when you're tired, your judgment is thrown off. That is a true statement, but let me say it another way, all right? Fatigue leads to frustration. And frustration leads you to settling for something inferior. Let me say it one more time. Fatigue leads you to frustration, and frustration leads you to settling for something inferior. This is where they were, and this is is where a lot of us are today. We're so tired of it all. And honestly, we're all there. Like, I'm tired of the effects of COVID. I'm tired of racial tension. I'm tired of 2020. I'm tired. And if you're there... God has a verse for you. Listen to me, everybody. Isaiah chapter 40 says, do you not know? Have you not heard? And maybe some of you haven't, and I'm so glad you're watching online today or in this room. But the Lord is the everlasting God. He's the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding, nobody can even fathom. He gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. Even young people, they grow tired and weary. And young people stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, they will renew their strength. You will soar on wings like eagles. You will run and not grow weary. And you will walk and you will not faint. Come on, put your hands together and say a good amen. And in this season... Don't be on the fringe of church. Listen, like be in the middle of what God's doing. You've seen Animal Planet? Like the predator always attacks the one little, because he never attacks the herd. There's strength in the herd. He always gets that one gazelle. (laughs) Just eating all by himself. I don't know. Well, he's lunch. Don't be by yourself in this season. Go through the Next Steps class, become a member, get on the dream team, get in a small group. I promise you, there's strength in the herd, people. 
And, and what happens is they were tired. Number two, write this down. They got distracted. They got distracted. This is important. Proverbs 29 says that without vision, people actually perish. Okay, this is so important to stay focused. I got a little ADD. I would have counted all the lights in the room already. And sometimes we have a hard time paying attention in life. How many of you have ever been super motivated and then lost motivation? Like you told yourself, hey, I'm working out on Monday. I'm working out on Monday. Monday comes, you're like, I meant next Monday. <laughs> you tell everybody, I'm going to start eating real healthy, man. I'm eating clean. I'm eating healthy. They bring donuts to work. You're like, okay, I'll have nine of them. You're like, what happened to the motivation? Well, you got distracted. Okay, watch this. They got distracted too. It's in our text. Ready for this? How do they get distracted? The Bible says they had very large herds. I can tell you missed it. Let me try it on this side. The Bible says they had very large herds. Some of you are like, it doesn't help just because you're saying it slower. <laughs> That's why they stayed in Gilead. Our text tells us the answer. Remember they said, we have very large herds. This land is suitable for herds. Let's just stay here. Like this group of people got so distracted and I started doing a little research and found where they acquired these herds. These herds were actually a blessing from God from previous battles he gave them victory over. Yeah. So time out. You're telling me, uh, tribe of Gad, that, that, that you have been blessed by God but now that blessing is keeping you from so the question is not, does God want to bless you? The question is, can you handle the blessing when it comes? Or will it turn around and become a stumbling block that will prohibit you from following him later? Woo! God has blessed you. What are you going to do with that? They turn around and said in verse 1, oh, it looks good. It's, it might look good, but it wasn't God. Don't settle for anything less than God's plan. Some of y'all are dating somebody. Why are you dating him? Because he look good. Yeah, but he ain't God. Some girl's going to break up with her boyfriend today to my text. Pastor said, you ain't God. Bye. <laughs> no, don't do that. I mean, pray and get some counsel. Don't, don't just do that because of that joke. But the truth is a lot of us settle for less than God's best. We put it in neutral instead of driving ahead. And this is where people begin to feel like they're stuck in a dip. It feels like there's no way out. It feels like God's taking too long. And I want to encourage you. I came from all the way from San Francisco, California to let somebody know this is not the time to make a permanent decision based on a temporary circumstance. Come on, everybody. I'm here to tell you this too shall pass. And don't settle for Gilead when God has Canaan for you. Don't try to decorate Gilead like Canaan. Come on. God has a plan. He's got a purpose. He's got a family. He's got destiny. This is not the time to get spiritual ADD. Stay focused. And I say that because I have ADD, so God can use even us. All right? Amen. If you have ADD. And if you have ADD, well, you might not even caught that last part. But I'm, just, I'm saying God can use us. And he wants to use you in a greater capacity. Because here's the problem, a distracted leader is just as bad as a quitting leader because both stop building. The devil's trying to distract us, get us off our course and our mission. Let me give you a, a thought, Nehemiah, there's two guys, Sam Ballot and Tobiah tried to get him to become distracted and he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. Nehemiah saw his hometown lying in ruins and he said, I'm not going to Facebook about it, I'm going to do something about it. Like you guys are helping with the hurricanes. You're rebuilding Baytown. You're, you're rebuilding the Houston area and around the country by planting churches with art. You are helping rebuild. You're not just talking about it. Come on, say, don't just talk about it. Be about it. By the way, if your life is in ruins, just because your life is in ruins doesn't mean you're ruined. Nehemiah goes home, begins to rebuild his city, and our cities need to be rebuilt. And as he's there, Sam Ballot and Tobiah tried to distract him from building. They literally are start off, they start off a little, like a little playground talk, a little smack talk. Like, hey, you're not going to be able to finish that. Even if a fox goes on it, it's going to fall over, like dumb, dumb stuff. Then it starts getting real serious. They threaten to kill him. Okay, come on down here and talk to us. We're going to kill you. And the Bible says in the valley of O-N-O, in the valley of O-N-O, Nehemiah said, oh no. Why would I stop building a great work to come and talk to your behind? Yeah. 
Listen to me, everybody. You need to be careful what voices you're allowing into your life right now. Because a lot of people, the enemy or other people are trying to distract you. Why would you entertain somebody talking about what you're giving your life to build? Don't ever entertain somebody talking about the church of Jesus Christ or your leaders. I had um, uh, earplugs when I was in my seventh, eighth grade job. I worked at a tree service in Oakland, cutting down trees, a lot of chainsaws. And my mama said this. She said this, put these in your ears, otherwise damage will occur. Okay, mama. Can I say the same thing to some of y'all? You need some spiritual earplugs. Don't listen to every voice. Everybody compl- I had one guy tell me, I just listen to everybody that complains about the church, and then I make my own decision. I was like, you wouldn't do that about your wife. <laughs> I got 30 people lined up, honey, going to take me out to coffee because they want to talk about you. I'm just going to make my own decision, though. No, you'd be like, bro, shut up. That's my wife. Don't do that about the church. Some people are like, well, it doesn't really bother me. Listen, if you don't like the, ra- the song on the radio, change the channel. And there's a lot of people in this season like, you know, it's not, it, it doesn't affect me that much. You don't think it's affecting you, but that song is killing you softly. <laughs> killing your passion to serve, killing your passion to give, and to be a part of the life of the church. No, you need to learn to say, oh, no. Like, don't even entertain it in this season because this is a season to rebuild. Okay, watch this. Watch. This is fun. <clears throat> he, Nehemiah built a team. And this is five things he did. He saw a need. He got a burden. He built a team. He worked tirelessly, and he finished strong. Let me say it again. He saw a need, got a burden, built a team, worked tirelessly, and finished strong. Just because you see a need doesn't mean you have a burden. Nehemiah and Jonah both saw the need. Only one got a burden. When's the last time you drove around your city and just wept over people that don't know God? I go on a mission. I'm not going to go to sleep until I invite somebody to church or add value to somebody to earn the right to share my faith. When's the last time we began to just keep going for it? Like we were pushing to get in the building. Now it's time to push for the city. Like the, God is setting you up. Look around. There's a few empty seats in this first service. Those seats represent souls that could be here in our lives, our friends, our family members. Just add value to them and you will earn the right to share your faith. Here's what he gave him, all right? You ready for this? He gave everybody a sword and a hammer. He gave everybody a sword and a hammer. Help me out, church. He gave everybody a sword and a hammer. One more time. He gave everybody a sword and a hammer. Okay, we live on the New Testament side of this text. And we know that in the New Testament, the sword represents the word of God. Hammer represents what we're building for God. And in this season, there's been a lot of people who have prided themselves on being so spiritual because they're reading the Bible, they're reading the Bible, they're reading the Bible, but they ain't building squat. And then you have other people trying to build over here, but they're not in the Word of God, so they don't have the architectural drawings, so what they're building is not even up to code. Can I tell you, in this season, I believe God's raising up some Nehemiahs in this church to be able to say, God, we need your word, but I'm going to get on the dream team. I'm not going to just sit soaking sour. I want to build because this is a season to rebuild and recover. Somebody shout amen. amen. Sean, why are you screaming so much? I don't know. But I do believe this. I do believe that God has a purpose and he's going to do something incredible in your life. But you have to be careful that you don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Number three, they lost hope. This is where a lot of people are. They lose hope. Guys, there was a million suicides last year. Did y'all hear me? A million people said, I'm through. Not to mention the other people who attempted it. So why are we gathering again? Because people are desperate. And this is what Gad said, to have come so close and then say, "Ah, we'll settle here. This is, for, this is far enough. Okay, watch this. Gad's inheritance was not God's inheritance. Let me tell you this. You heard of 2020 vision? Anybody wear glasses? I, I started wearing glasses when I was about 21 years old because I just liked the way they looked. They were fake glasses, but I wanted to look a little older. Plus, I just wanted to preach with them because I felt like they could really drive a point home because you, you could do this when you're preaching, like, hey, listen. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you. I felt like it did something extra. <laughs> you turn 40, and these are real, okay? So, <laughs> all right, um, how many have ever been to the eye doctor, and when you go there, um, you try to memorize a chart before you get the, anybody, raise your hand if you've ever tried to memorize a chart. Here's what they do. They, they tell you, cover one eye, and then you're reading some chart. Like, can you read what's in front of you? 
And I'm like, E, U, is that a W? You know, you're just struggling to read what's in front of you. And my eye doctor said this. He said, Sean, you got to be careful because every couple years your prescription changes. Can I tell you God's changing our prescription as a church? We're not leading the same way we led in 2019 or in 2020. God has more for us. And I believe he's getting the church together and he's asking, can you read what's in front of you? And the church is now stepping up to say, God, I, I think I see it. Do not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Come on, everybody. Don't quit now. Don't settle now. Take your next step. You heard of 2020 vision? Let me give you 5020 vision. There's a guy named Bible named Joseph, and if anybody had a dip, it was this guy. He was sold by his brothers, human trafficked, falsely accused, thrown in prison, and forgotten for 13 long years. But if you read the story of this Old Testament book, you see every once in a while there was this line tucked into the problems and trauma of his life that said, and the Lord was with Joseph. Sounds better with a British accent, doesn't it? It would be trauma, 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 trial, 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 and the Lord was still with him. He never quit in the dip, and because of that, God gave him a fresh strategy, which I'm praying over you businessmen and businesswomen and ministry leaders, that God would give us fresh strategy. He turned around and would, it was elevated to become second in command of the most powerful nation of the world, Egypt at that time. Listen. And then saved all these thousands of people's lives. His brothers come one day to buy food from him, but they don't recognize him. Like the same guys who tried to kill him, they don't recognize him because he's got these Egyptian clothes on. He's got like this MAC eyeliner makeup. He's Egyptian. And they're asking, begging for food. And instead of taking revenge, which he could have, Genesis 50, 20, because of a different perspective, he saw it differently, says this, you intended to harm me. Somebody say, but God. But God intended it. Actually, he worked it around for good to accomplish what's now being done, the saving of all these thousands of people's lives. Listen, you might be in a dip, but there's some lessons you can learn in the dip. Just don't settle there. Don't build a home there. Don't, don't stay there because your destiny, just like Joseph, is on the other side of your dip. This is not the time to watch other people go into what God has for them and be, us be on the sidelines. Come on, everybody. Let's lock arms. Let's all go in together. Let's not settle one more moment because what is in front of you is so much greater. Would you bow your heads with me? If you're watching online in this room, you say, Sean, my life may not be right with God. What do I do? It would be my honor to lead you in a commitment prayer. Don't settle for being distant from God. Don't settle for being away from God. Jesus died on a cross, paid for our sin, rose from the dead. He longs to have a trust relationship that's active with you. All right, listen, there might be some of you in the room or watching online where you're religious, but you're empty. Like you go to church, but you don't have an active trust relationship with Jesus. Then there might be some of us that we were once close to God, but man, we just drifted away. We're not where we used to be. We're not where we ought to be. I would love to lead you in a commitment prayer. I'm not going to have you stand or come to the front. Our heart's not to embarrass you here. It's just to connect you to God. And I'm expecting Growth Track to be p -p -p packed today and every time that it's happening with people saying, I want to discover my gift. I want to get on the team. I'm here to rebuild and recover. But your first step, if that's you, and you say, Sean, count me in that commitment prayer when you pray it. All across this room, on the count of three, could you just lift up your hand and say, Sean, count me in that prayer. One, two, three. Just lift it up and just leave it up. Yes, 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 yes. Leave it up. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, every yes is a hand. Let's clap our hands and encourage them. Every hand is a soul. Some of you online even raised your hand. All right, just like I did for my, my daughter this last week when she got married, I gave them the words, but they made them their own to each other. I'll give you the words. You make them your own to God, all right? Just say, Heavenly Father, 
Thank you for loving me first. Today I give you my life. Forgive me from my sin. Wash me clean. Be my Lord and Savior. Today, I'm not going to settle. Use all of my gifts to reach others with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we clap our hands for everybody who prayed that prayer today? God bless you, church. Wasn't that good? So good. Thank you, thank you. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer, let me give you some helpful information. Don't let, the, don't let it end at the prayer moment. Don't let it end with amen. Come on, it's, it's a lifestyle. Christianity is not a label, it's a lifestyle. And around here, we want to help you uh, with this journey of faith that you're now on. Text the word faith to the number on the screen. We'll, we'll let you know how we can help you as a church family, come around you, surround you, support you. Uh, in this new journey. So uh, I, I say this every week, but give God, if you prayed that prayer, listen up. Give God one year of your life. One year. Go all in with God. Give Him a real shot. And uh, I believe this is what you'll find, that He'll take you places you never thought you could go. You'll overcome things that used to trip you up. You'll be taking new territory for God. You'll be seeing the blessing of God in your life, experiencing freedom, meeting good friends. And, uh, and, and I know God has great things in store. Church family, let's give them another good hand clap. Can we do it and celebrate all the life change happening today? I love it. Hey, before we leave, we're going to worship the Lord through our giving of tithes and offerings to support His work. Through are guests, no pressure at all to give. This is... This is for those that call Faith Family home, and we are so grateful for your generosity. All the ways to give are, are right up here uh, on the screen. Thank you for, for giving. I want to just uh, give a big shout out to everyone that went to Louisiana yesterday to, to help the, the churches and the communities there and uh, to, to rebuild and to recover over, you know, the terrible storm that they encountered a little over a week ago. But uh, thank you so much for being that kind of church. I love hearing those kind of stories, and um, I appreciate your passion. If you'd like to give towards those recovery efforts, you can select Hurricane Relief, and we'll make sure that 100% of everything given there is, uh, is given to partners that are already on the ground, working and serving churches that need help. We're already sending gifts. We've already sent finances. Things are already happening. And we're going to walk all of our friends over to our east through that season uh, that they're now in. And uh, they'll, they'll get better. They'll rebuild. Uh, and and uh, they're used to storms. Uh, all of us are in some capacity. We know what to do next. So thank you so very much for, for your giving. Also, you heard uh, Sean mention several times, Next Steps 1.0 is today. I want to invite you to come. Karen and I will make our rounds through there. Love to meet you. But it's right after service, right across the lobby space there in our Next Steps room. Come on, we've even got, I think we've got some I don't know if they're chocolate chip or snickerdoodle or oatmeal. Come on, anybody like peanut butter cookies? I don't know, but they're fresh baked. I'm not talking one of those Sam's, you know, big plastic thing. Click, 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 click. And there's like a thousand cookies there. No, these are fresh baked cookies. They're going to be in there today at Next Steps. Just at least go get a cookie, right? I mean, so, uh, but it's half an hour experience at the most. Leave your kids right there in their rooms if you've got children. Leave them in their classroom, and uh, our teachers will take care of them, and then you can go get them after Next Steps. Small groups, new semester kicking off next Sunday. Yeah. Oh, if you're not in a group, get in a group. And uh, I promise you it'll add value to your life. Uh, I think the directory is live now. Is that right, Pastor Tony? Yeah. Next Sunday it's going live. Well, yeah, hopefully it'll go live ASAP because they've said in the news that it was going live. So we better get all that info up and running. But, but get that going. Get, go check it out this week. Go find a group. Be a part of a group. Shop them around. Kick some tires, you know. You'll find the right one for you. And uh, I think I'm going to get in a group. Carrie, you want to start a group? Just me and you, small group. That's a little much for this early. Hey, I know some of you guys are 10 o'clock, uh, 945 service people that came to the first service. I want to say thank you for those of you that made the switch. I know we were encouraging that because, you know, we're running out of seats at the 945. So thank you. I think we ought to run out of seats at this service. 
pastor, I'm here. Isn't that enough? How many of you know we are not, we do not exist for, for us. We, the church, exist for those that are not yet here. It's the people that are out there. Let's reach them. Let's bring them in. Come on, let's pack out a row. Remember in the Baptist church, they are a, a denominational church. They say, pack a pew. Pack a pew Sunday. Come on, what would happen if you got all your family, your crazy relatives and, you know, neighbors and heathen co-workers right here with you in the next couple of weeks, few weeks? Wouldn't that be awesome? Some guy's pointing at his wife right now. I don't know what's going on in this church. Let's all stand to our feet. So glad that you came to God's house today. Our prayer partners are coming. If you need prayer, we'd love to pray with you and for you. Let me bless you as we go. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. May he smile on you and be kind to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. We love you, everybody. Have an awesome Labor Day. Awesome week. We are so glad you were able to join us online today. If this was your first time joining us, do not forget to connect with us. You can text the word guest to the number 44144 to fill out a digital connection card. And if you made the decision to follow Jesus today, that is so awesome. And this is something that we love to celebrate at FFC. So if you did make that decision today, we would love to hear about it. So text the word faith to the number 44144. If you would like to give and help us continue to reach others with the good news of Jesus, you can do so on our website, on our app, or by texting the word FFC Give to the number 77977 at any time. We truly can't do any of this without you and your generosity. If you need anything at all, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. You can contact us through our social media pages or through the contact page on our website anytime throughout the week. Now here's a message from our pastors. Hello, everybody. We want to thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. We trust it's been a blessing and an encouragement to you. It's always an honor to come right there into your home or wherever you may be watching. If this is your first time ever joining us, we want to give you a special welcome. We'd love to connect with you. Yeah, so we want to invite you out to one of our services in person. We're located at 6500 North Main. We would love to see you soon.